Over the past 40 years of working in and teaching the principles of digital data acquisition, I've developed a group of demos that show the basic concepts behind the digital data acquisition process. Uh, the first of these, which I'm going to show you today, is about aliasing. And aliasing is probably the most important topic we can talk about. It is an irretrievable error source that we always have in digital data acquisition. And it's un it is important that we understand what's going on with this. I have taught this subject so many times that my students have given me a nickname of Captain Aliasing. And so with that in mind, I will don my captain's hat and we will get started on our journey. Let's take a look at what happens when we change the number of points per cycle in our digital data acquisitions process. What I have here is a sine wave, the simplest of waves that makes it relatively easy to understand what we're going to be talking about. And the true signal is shown in green here and the digitized signal which is being sampled at 20 points per cycle is shown with the red dots. To understand aliasing properly though we need to go into the spectral domain use the Fourier transform to uh, find out what the frequency components in the signals are. So what I've done here is I've calculated the Fourier transform. It is shown up here and what we see is a spike that we expect to see with a sine wave in the spectrum. So what I'm going to do is increase the frequency of the sine wave, uh, keeping the sample rate constant. The sample rate is one sample per second. If your sample rates are different than that, then simply multiply everything you see here by whatever your sample rate is. So what I'm going to do is grab this slider right here and move the frequency up. And what we see as I do this is, is that I get fewer and fewer points per cycle. What I'm going to do is expand the scale so that we can see what's actually going on. And what we're doing here is we are approaching this red arrow right here, which is that one half of the sample rate. That's called the Nyquist frequency. We're going to call it F sub n for the Nyquist frequency. What we're seeing here is, is that we're getting a less and less well-defined signal. But Shannon's theorem told us that if we acquire more than two points per cycle, then the, the signal is completely defined. So we will talk about that later. But for the moment, let's just assume that all of that is correct. And I'm going to continue on out to higher and higher frequency. And here is about 2.4 points per cycle. You can see that the data is relatively sparse. So what I'm going to do now is land precisely on two points per cycle. And what it looks like now is that it looks like we've got a pretty well-defined uh, signal here. But the problem here is, is that by changing when I acquire the data during the cycle, I can get any answer that I want, ranging from zero to something like full scale. So at this point, we have violated Shannon's theorem. We don't have a good definition of what the signal is. Anything up to a, f a frequency of a half of the sample rate is OK. Anything above that violate Shannon's theorem. So let's violate it even worse. So I'm going to grab the cursor again and move on out. And now we see something strange going on. This is our true frequency right here. But when I calculate the spectrum, what I see is that it looks like the sine wave is at lower frequency. And as I sweep out further and further, it becomes more and more obvious what's going on. I'm acquiring the true signal that is shown right here. And my digital data acquisition system thinks that it is a sine wave. That 
at much lower frequency, and that is exactly what my spectrum is showing. The digital data acquisition system is lying to me. So what I'm going to do is continue out to higher and higher frequency to precisely one point per cycle. And what I see now is that it looks like a DC signal. And that's exactly what my spectrum is showing here. Zero frequency. And I can, by changing when the data is acquired during the cycle, I can get any level that I want. Let's grab the cursor again and continue on out. And now what we see is, is that my apparent frequency is increasing. The true frequency is right here. The digitized indication of the frequency is back here. And I will continue on out to one and a half points per cycle. And what I get here again is that phenomenon that we saw at exactly the Nyquist frequency. Continuing on out. I see that my apparent frequency, indicated frequency, goes back down. And if I continued on out to higher and higher frequency, I would see the indicated frequency wander back and forth. So what's happening is this. When I'm below the Nyquist frequency, everything is fine. When I'm above the Nyquist frequency, between the Nyquist frequency and the sample rate, the energy folds once around the Nyquist frequency and winds up here being mirrored around the Nyquist frequency. If I continue on out higher, it, again it's folding back to this frequency right here. If I go above the sample rate, now what it does is that it folds around the Nyquist frequency, then around zero and winds up back here again and starts marching upward. And when I get out here, it falls around the Nyquist frequency, around zero, around the Nyquist frequency, until it comes back here and gets us. If we have any frequency components that are above the Nyquist frequency, they are all going to fall back here into the frequency range that we are interested in. The data is aliased.